I felt like the most sleep I had was taking off. I don't remember the takeoff part. My legs are so stiff from sitting on that plane. I just had to get up a few times, just stand in the back by the toilets. I know, it was rough, huh? Uh, yeah, well, well, I don't know. How would you know? I felt like I needed to get up, too. <laughs> from your bed? Huh? From your bed? Dude, you were sitting right by me. Yeah, no, you were laying right by me. So, uh, yeah, we just landed, uh, you know, a few hours ago in, in, in Oz, and now here we are over at uh, Yamaha Australia and uncrating the bikes. Um, as you can see, uh, both Cooper and I's bike and, uh, and both mechanics, um, Eric and, uh, and my mechanic, Goose. So, yeah, just building them up and getting ready for, uh, for the weekend. Dude, I should bring my seat. This thing's hard. It's all new. I have to drill some holes in this seat. No, no, you, you need seat. Dude. Oh, it feels hard. I was just saying to Goose, you know, like, you put hours and hours on, on your bike at home, and then you jump on a new one, and it has a new seat cover, a new seat. He claims it's not a new seat, like all bullshit, but, um, you know, everything's stiff, and just, yeah, this doesn't feel like yours, you know? It's like a new car when you jump in a rental car, you know? It's like you gotta, Jump in and reset everything and make it make it yours. Don't strip that bolt. Those things are gold. I brought a couple. <laughs> I brought a couple. <laughs> <laughs> this is hopefully my boots, boots gear. Um, and then I hopefully that's a helmet. I'm pretty sure that's a helmet. Got some custom gear just for the weekend. So that's a start. You can smell it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Sydney on the back. A little green and gold. It's pretty cool. I'm stoked on it. So we're ready. That race bike for Anaheim better look a little nicer than this one. Oh, it's your heart showing him. Dude, he's the new guy. You can't just be nice to the new guy. She runs. All right, bikes are built. Uh, bikes run. So now it's uh, now it's time to head back to. Well, not back to. It's time to go check into the hotel, get a shower after not having one for probably 36 hours or whatever it's been. But uh, yeah, no, it's nice to get the bikes all done and out of the way, and tomorrow I can just kind of chill. I mean, I have work to do, but for the most part, I don't have to babysit a goose and drive him around. If you guys want to go, we'll load up, because we're staying here tonight. Oh, OK, tomorrow. we'll let you do that. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll let you do that. <laughs> You know, I grew up in West Wales End, you know, so it's, it's kind of almost central, close enough to the beach where you got the beach kids. Um, the football and the soccer kids are all right there too, so... Um, yeah, like, you're kind of like the black sheep a little bit, you know, and... I don't remember anything, any moment where I didn't think of moto, I didn't think of going to the USA, and I didn't think that I could achieve being uh, a Supercross champion. It was the glitz and the glamour of like how rad it was, the, the cool gear, the, the factory bike. Um, that was what was cool, you know? The big ass trophy they used to get and still get. The number one play, like those were the things that excited me. You know, like the evolution of the sport from kind of when I went pro in 1998 to now in 2016, you know, it's quite amazing, you know. I remember my first pro contract was $5,000. You know, it didn't even cover my, my air tickets to the races, you know. It wasn't a, a job that I thought that I could grow old and get a wife and kids and, and 
you know, and, and succeed in life. I always think there's two options in life, you know, you sink or swim. Nothing gets in the way. You don't fall short. You don't, you know, you, you, you make it happen. You know, I was very, very fortunate that Yamaha um, immediately seen my potential, and that was really the beginning um, of my American dream. Today, I'll be joined by four-time Supercross champion Ryan Villapoto and our very own two-time Supercross champ, Chad Reed. It's nice to be back. It's, uh, you know, typically I get home once a year and this is my second time. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm second time around for Supercross here and um, comes at a good time. I'm in shape, ready to go. In terms of Chad Reed, where do you see him within the industry and in the standings right now? Chad's unique. He has a lot of fans, a lot of following, still racing at 34 and still, you know, a front runner, which is great. He's still having fun at it. To race and do what he did here and then, you know, shoot over to Europe and then race there and, and, and then come to the States and race. And, and I mean, he's been, he's been in the States for a long time now racing. Um, and he's made, you know, a huge name for himself, and and he's an icon, obviously, down here, and um, you know, which is which is great, you know, for the sport. I am joined by two legends of the Supercross world, Chad Reed and Ryan Villapoto, who are in the country to compete in this year's Australian X Open Motorsport event. Chad, let's start with you. Obviously. You've been an icon of the sport for so long. Everyone in Australia is looking forward to seeing you right again here at one of our biggest events. How are you feeling about it? Well, the biggest event, and I'm excited. Um, it's been a year since I've been here racing, so uh, yeah, and it should be fun. I mean, two years, well, maybe actually three years since I've raced Ryan, so it should be, uh, bring, you know, bring back some good old memories. Fast forward 17, 18 years, as somewhat the face of Supercross here in this country, when I come to Australia and I race, it's the hardest race of the year for me. So I've raced obviously in America and in Europe and, and, and you know, wherever else Supercross is at its biggest. But this show here is as good as the best I've ever been a part of. Like AusX Open is the benchmark for Supercross in Australia. It's that one event that uh, we all look forward to, you know, in, all year long. Obviously been looking forward to this event, the AusX Open, for really a year now. I mean, ever since last year, I obviously watched it and uh, paid close attention to it and looked like such a cool event. And being in, in Olympic Park, which is tons of history, having the Olympics here in 2000, so just as a fan, I would love to come just watch the race. So me being a racer, it's kind of double for me. I get to enjoy it um, as a racer and just kind of the whole atmosphere as a fan. I'm pumped to be back here in Sydney for the AusX Open. You know, to race again. I was able to race here last year and, and loved it. So, you know, they have us Americans and, you know, Chad come in and it's been heard around the world. It means a lot to come back. Um, I think that AusX Open represents the sport of Supercross at a level that makes me proud. You kind of take it on your shoulders and you're like, this is for the best for the sport and we're crushing it. And you know, like you see the newspapers, you see the mainstream media and it makes you really proud. I, I do my best, my very best uh, to take that on and, and, and to a, take it to a new level.
got my rebound on my ball. So I just got done with quali. Um, I ended up third fastest. Cooper was fastest. Dan Reed in second. Myself. Uh, Villapoto was fourth, I believe. Um, I'm two tenths off. So uh, yeah, it's kind of like in our world, it's a lot. But then to fix it, or you know, like I think about my lap, and you know, you feel like you easily left that out there. So uh, nothing. You know, nothing to stress about at this point. What's up, boys? What's up? Hey, how you doing? How's things? Doing good? Pretty pretty, man. Yeah? You go check out practice? I'll go in there one time and get it. Yeah, check and see practice. Yeah, First time I've seen it. Got that. Awesome. That's cool. You feel like you're going fast there, or you feel Nah, this one's so tight, so it actually feels really slow. Is it? Yep. The intensity here is really high because it's so tight and and normally it's kind of like you get a bit of a flow going, you know, yeah. like the, the, the stadium's bigger. Um, where here it's like you, you got to, every little inch of the track, you're trying to get a tenth here and a tenth there. So it actually, although it's smaller and, and somewhat easier of a track, it's, it's higher intensity. Cheers, man. Nice to meet you. All the best. Big fan. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, nice to see you. All right. See you, man. Have a good night. Have fun. What do you think? What's your input? Go to eight. I mean, we've been to eight before. It's not somewhere we haven't been, right? You know, here we are. Um, I'm happy. You know, like I'm back at Yamaha. Um, things happen for a reason. Um, I. I loved Yamaha. At some point, I always had that feeling that I really wanted to go home. So to kind of reignite that relationship and 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 to finish a career um, with a company that had provided me with so much and my memories and, and things like that over the years um, has been awesome. Maybe just go one. I'm going to leave him. Leave him soft like that. Yeah, leave him like that. And then we'll just go one more. Yeah, I mean it's something that we haven't done with this, with this setup, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, it's really only, you know. Of course, you want to do well in a heat race, but it's, uh, it is only a heat race. Every year that I had a bike that I felt comfortable on, I was champion, or I was second, or I was winning races. Anything short of that is failing for me. I mean, I didn't think we're far off. I just just a little help. Yeah, I just need a little help. I'm struggling with getting getting weight on the front. You know, you don't just have strengths. You know, like nobody. I don't care if you're winning every race. Um, there's things as a rider that you're just not happy with. It's the window uh, of opportunity that you have built into the package that uh, that allows you to. Um, minimize those those negatives concentrating on achieving that you know the the, the feeling that i need um, from the bike first and foremost because that's really what allows me to be the best that i can be on the track but yeah let, let's go one more and then we'll just uh right. and see what that does okay all right give that a whirl want to keep rolling guys we're sort of running a little bit late at the moment so selfie what do we have got hey man <laughs> yeah. thank you guys cheers Thank you, thank you, folks. And you wish you could stop and say hi to everyone, but that's unfortunately not possible. 
Yeah, we're, right now we're on our way to uh, Monster for their thing, what they call a, uh, a rig riot. Thank you. Um, something that I've done many, many times from Spain, uh, England, Australia now, USA. So it's a good time. Yeah, I think he's really enjoying, you know, being at the races and and racing. And uh, you know, he's a fan favorite in the states. And then when he comes here, it's everybody, you know, is cheering for Chad. So it's, it's cool. And you know, when he comes here, and he's just, like I said, a cool dude, and talks to all the kids, talks to all the people. And you know, I think uh, I have a lot of respect for him, and I think everybody does. I mean, it's really an honor to to race him, and he's he's a legend, as as all Aussies say. Turnout so far is awesome. I mean, uh, today is a sold-out event, so uh, it's exciting to, you know, just to see it, and you, you can feel the vibe. You know, like we're running on a good wave from last year, so uh, that was pretty cool. Got to, got to meet John Z. Always wanted to, you know, always been a big fan. You know, boy from Newcastle, so you know, John's brother's a legend. So stoked on that. Goggle prep is something that I don't normally do. <laughs> I actually enjoy it, but uh, in the stage you get spoiled. You have a goggle guy running around asking you what you want, and you tell him and he does it. So it's the little things that you appreciate when you travel. Oh. Same deal? I thought Goose was taking a nap. Exact same. You want to ride out, Goose? Hey. Did your nap go long? Ready, old man? I am. Let's go break this thing. All right. Ride it like I stole it. Bring it back on the box or bring it back in a box? Yep. One or the other. How about I put it on the box? That's what I thought. And then you put it in a box. Good. That's an awesome plan. <laughs> That's a good plan. not a nervous like like a questioning yourself yeah. it's more of a just a, that Energy it's and... it's go time you're not nervous right now yeah it's pretty special that you know for him to be back here you know where he grew up the country he grew up and and racing against you know us top top Americans and really I guess you could say his backyard is a special thing for him I think tonight's probably be fun. Yeah, I'll be fun. What is a champion? It's hard to explain exactly why, but something is just a little bit different. This is where the butterflies start to happen. I like it, I like it. This is why I come back and do it every year.
I was a fan of Chad, you know, ever since a kid. That was kind of the guy that I always looked at and tried to ride like. You know, I just always liked his style, and he was so smooth, but uh, like a smooth, aggressive at the same time. And you know, he wasn't always the fastest guy, but he was always there. You know, he was always knocking at that win or, or winning. This is how we get things underway tonight. Work the clutch in a little bit. I already did, but do a little more. We see Chad Reed firing up that bike. 30 second Carter's up. Some of the best riders ever are here. It's an unbelievable lineup. Our greatest ever export, the legendary Chad Reed, getting the crowd fired up. There's a bunch of talented riders that are not going to be qualifying in this heat race. There's only room for two. Let's see who they are. Start by Chad Reed and he will lead them. Runs a little wide. Gets it done though. Chad Reed has the lead. You're on board. Yeah, Chad Reed is, if you could explain him in one word, I would say gritty. The guy just gets it done. Um, as soon as you start to count him out, he wins that very next weekend. Um, and as a fan of, of his, uh, watching him ride, that was a style that I wanted to replicate. Um, his, his style through the whoops, his style really throughout the whole track, that's something as a fan and a racer, like I, I was trying to replicate that when, when, uh, when I was sitting at home watching the races on TV, I wanted to be like Chad Reed. So Reed clicks off another lap. He's doing it smoothly, isn't he, Lee? So why he's applying himself to all aspects of this track at the moment, it's fluid. As a racer, I think his reputation is just, he's so smart, uh, I mean, he, he knows what he needs to do on what lap and you know where he needs to put his bike or you know everything i mean when it comes from the start all the way to the last lap he's so calculated and what he does and it's just so smart so i think that's what makes it tough to race him you know and um he's gonna he's gonna fight till the end check it flag knack knack perfect way to start the night Well, Chad Reed, that's the way we want to set up the night. And of course, your arch rival and good friend, Ryan Villapoto, won heat one, you've come out and won heat two. Great ride, you're riding sensational. Yeah, well, I mean, where we need to be. Um, I need, I don't even know how many races left, but I just need starts like that all night and uh, want to loosen up a little bit, man. These crowds kind of got me a little pumped up. I was even, you know, I could feel it and I want to win and I'm glad to get that out of the way. You want to put a clutch in it now? Uh, yeah. What do I have? I have Super Pole. And then that shootout pole thing. And all the shootouts. Look good though. Nail the start again, yeah, huh? Yeah. I love seeing nice. your start like that. You know, you have this dream, and you 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 vision, and you and you try to put all these people into place to achieve that feeling and achieve that um, way of building yourself opportunities that put you in a position to be a, a challenger week in and week out and you work with the team and, and, the, and the, your mechanic and your trainer and you're like okay you know we really got beat up here here and here let's be better there and that's racing you know like at any level Formula One, MotoGP, Motocross, Supercross that's that's real we don't live in an era and, a, and an age where 20% bike, 80% rider. It's just, it's not like that anymore since the four stroke and the, you know, the new generation. What do you think on tires? What do you think about tires tonight? Huh? What do you think about tires tonight? Did you drop it on the new one? I did drop it, but I'm talking about a new one. Having Mike Gosler um, now in my corner for the last, you know, good part of 10 years, one of the nicest, raddest people in the world. You know, the ups, the downs that both of us encountered and, and, uh, and here we are all these years later as uh, just friends that respected each other, that worked hard, that drives you to be the best that you can be. Could you see the turn before the finish? No, not really. I think honestly, I think that's where I gave up. I actually feel like I'm giving up half a second. Why? Not two tens. I just feel terrible. I came here and they're all like, you know, Chris Burr and RV, I'm like, hey, Brayton. <laughs> um, Brayton's going to be the guy. He's been racing every weekend down here. He's got his, his well, we have our bikes too, but I mean, like, yeah, he has his bike much. dialed in for, like, an Aussie style yeah, and yeah. everything like that. You know, we come here and it's like you take three, four practices to, you know, dial a thing in, soften it up because it's way too stiff. Or you do something like that, you see in the dirt, it's like yeah. bubble gum, and yeah. you're like, oh, it's yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah. 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 
build-up has begun. Big important prize of the main event is so coming this up. This game is a lot to do about confidence. Chad Reed, been an awesome night. He was the dominant force on the Saturday night here 12 months ago. Can he take this one out? He's survived several different eras of the sport with, with guys coming in that, you know, might have beat him for a couple races and then next thing you know he's there beating him the very next weekend he's worked on his weaknesses and, and there he is again so the guy's awesome on and off the track gritty as ever a competitor that you don't really like racing because you know he's going to show up every single weekend no matter what the track conditions four minutes we got guys coming back from gps from american supercross american nationals <laughs> off the couch for that guy number two yeah. i mean we're competitive and you always have to watch your back to a certain extent but there's guys you really don't you know don't leave the inside open completely you know and and chad we had a mutual respect and we never really got into it you know we, we've had some great racing together and and you know hopefully we can do it again this weekend They're over the bars, ready for the start. Championship on the line, too. Nice start down the inside by Villapoto. Not quite. Brayton around the outside. He's going to hold on to it. Villapoto, Brayton. Brayton Reed. triples out. Reed's in there, too. Oh, and Reed just stuts Villapoto immediately. Look at Reed. Eyeing up the number 10, getting closer. He's closer he's here. He's, clo he's, yeah. he's closer, for sure. But he's got to be closer if he's going to use the Shannon shortcut. Like I said, you've got to be right on the rear wheel and then just pull the trigger. He's got margin, both of them. Both Brayton and Reed have margin over Jay Marmont in third. It's about 6.5 seconds. Further back, Reed definitely closer now, less than a second. So the race is between these two at the moment. uses it. He used the shortcut, did he? And the crowd erupt as he went to put it into Brayton there, just not close enough. He might have been able to have gotten a little dirty and removed Brayton from the track. Brayton clicks off another lap. Reed still there, lurking. Watch, Reed always just happens to close it up just a few bike lengths. Brayton from Reed, it's 1.1 seconds. Oh, lap traffic. Todd Sea Waters, Riders. good yeah. choice. Yeah, and, but the thing is, Waters, even though he's trying to stay out of the way, he was on the premier line there, so you saw Reed had to make a line change coming to the woods. And every time he gets close to Brayton, there it is! Oh! So close, he gets there! And Reed. the crowd go ballistic! Reed will dive up the inside and takes the lead. This place is going bananas. This is what they came to see, their boy Chad Reed. Everyone on their feet. They are loving Chad Reed. Yeah. Reed nearly out to five seconds now. We're already on the final lap, so wow, this race just flew by. Night one here at the AusX Open belongs to Chad Reed. He takes it out. Look at that. Fantastic. The fans love it. Look at them. That's their hero right there, the 22, Chad Reed. On their feet, just like 2015. And Saturday how... night belongs to Chad Reed. Well, Chad, we didn't get the whole shot, but I believe you're in 2004 form. That's amazing. You look so fit. You've got to be happy. 04 is uh, the big ass. But I want to believe it. I really want to believe that. Um... <laughs> You know, I'm, uh, I'm well aware of my time running out. And man, I want to fight hard all the way to the end. And uh, I love coming home. I don't know why I'm emotional, but just, man, I, I've been working really hard the last two months, three months. And uh, he made a mistake and I jumped on him. <laughs> I want to give a big shout out to Goose. Flying from the States and uh, he's my guy, man. He, I love working with him. and. We'll see what we can do tomorrow. Congratulations, Sydney. Will you please give your hometown hero a massive round of applause, Chad Reed? Feels good, huh?
Not bad. Not bad. The young punk. <laughs> it's too bad for a couple of sprint tickets. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 34 is the new 22. Sydney, the Aussex Open 2016, night number one. The SX1 final is run and done. Sydney, will you please show some love for Chad Reed? I just think that this uh, actual stadium, it just has something special. And I can promise you that year two, night one, sold out at 16,000 people, and that how loud they were for me um, is something that I'll never forget. It was, it was very, very cool. And uh, throughout the whole night, I just, just kind of strived and, and fed off of the, the energy. And, and I was emotional in the main event, you know? Like, I don't know, like I just felt a, an energy that I hadn't felt before, and that was uh, really special. Reedy getting choked up, that, that blew me away. That's how much this victory tonight and coming home to this event means to him. It just shows you how much effort Chad Reed puts into his racing, and you can see, he said, I don't know why I'm emotional. Well, it's, he puts everything into it, and, well, he treated them to a, a great race. To compare me and compare, you know, others, um, I think the only thing that can be compared is uh, the level of passion and commitment that I had um, to being the best. I remember, you know, like you just throw this big old 20 liter gas can on, you know, the front of you and off I went to crazes, you know, big sand track in, uh, in Curry Curry and I, you would just stay there all day, you know, and just, Keep filling up the bike, Moto. Fill up the bike, you know. And until that was gone, and you bring and you bring that thing home empty, um, and that was the passion that I had, you know. Like I was willing to do whatever it took. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, What's up, mate? How you doing? You can put hashtag on it, sure. Hashtag. Yeah. It's the first time I've been asked that. Huh? It's the first time I've been asked that. <laughs> Well, you know, Chad's, um, he's the best guy that we've ever had from Australia, you know, to, well, that's my opinion, to go to America and race on the world stage. There will always be that respect. You know, we understand how hard it is, and if someone can achieve something that someone hasn't been able to yet, you understand that how hard that actually is. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of respect, and you, you can tell, you know, Chad respects a lot of the other guys as well, because, um, you know, we're all, we're all out there trying to do the exactly the same thing. Hey, Rito, did you ever used to sign your name where you would do the hashtag and then your number? I, I was gonna say, he just asked me, he goes, can you sign your number with a hashtag? And I'm like, I know that that's not the meaning that he's meaning, you know, like it's not, the, we're not going old school, we're going, uh, we're going new school, everything hashtag. I remember doing my name in capital letters with just a big hashtag, <laughs> 26, like, you know, whatever my number was back then. What's up, buddy? Ready for the races? Yeah. Yeah? The time frame that he's actually being competitive and at the top is huge. I don't, it's hard for me to even think of someone that's, you know, been along for that amount of time uh, that has been that competitive. It's raced in three different eras and being, you know, being the guy. He's been out there for a long time. He's, he's raced uh, Ricky, he's raced James, he's raced me, Dunge now, and, and, and now Cooper, right? So, I mean, he's smart and, and, and he knows what he's doing. There you go. That was pretty funny. You know, we were talking about it uh, at, at Las Vegas, and he said that on the third number two he'd raced in his years. He had to race McGrath, early on in the 2000s, raced RV, and now, now I'm the third number two, so he's like, man, you're making me feel old. <laughs> I think we need to go back to like what I race with this year. The engine that we have here is, uh, I wanna say it has a little more compression, and uh, dude, it's too fast. I actually got to meet him when I was about nine years old. I got to go to his facility and ride with him and that's when I really, you know, became even a bigger fan. You know, just how nice and cool he was and, you know, his attitude, I think, towards racing is, is pretty awesome. You know, I think he, he races with a lot of heart and, and I think sometimes 
in this sport that gets lost. So. Go Cooper Webb! Like if I'm if I'm good and I'm like you know like you're smooth, but like when you're behind someone and you try to be just a little bit more aggressive, yeah, it's so hard to get power to the ground. Like I'm just lighting the thing up everywhere, you know. To have him, you know, be a childhood hero and now as a teammate is something that you know is something out of a story. You know, I don't think he could have written it any better. So uh, I look forward to not only racing him here this weekend, but you know, being able to spend a lot more time with him and. Uh, you know, just learn. Two for the French people? Yes. Or two for you? I come from France. <laughs> Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome, no problem. Last night went awesome. It was, uh, uh, in my opinion, a huge success uh, as an event and, and even from uh, from a personal, you know, aspect. So uh, I felt like I rode well. Um, you know, you you want to ride well and you want to get good starts. And I felt that I uh, I did both of those. So um, for me, I was I was stoked. Um, I've raced all over the world, and uh, probably have to say that last night was probably the loudest um, crowd that I've ever heard. You know, I mean, this is. A, what was it, 16,000 people uh, in a pretty pretty tight arena. It was, a, it was an amazing uh, feeling. I actually got a little emotional, not gonna lie. Um, you know, as you get older and, you know, you, you, the appreciation and the things that you feel, um, they kind of hit home a little more. And, uh, man, I was, I was kind of lost for words and it was, you know, just, I didn't even know why I was emotional. <laughs> it just was, uh, it was just a unique feeling that, uh, yeah, and that you, 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 you witness, you feel, you know, so few times in a career. And I was, uh, I was proud, proud to be that guy to win the Australia race and then uh, win the main event. So, uh, yeah, but that was yesterday. Now we've got to, you know, move forward and see what we can do tonight. Love what we do, but there are those days that are, aren't as great as others. And um, you know, the motivation—that would be the hardest thing. The motivation would be the toughest thing for Chad to go all this time. And you can clearly see that he loves doing what he does, and that's what drives him. And um, you know, it takes someone very special to be able to be that guy for that long. I want to be an athlete. I want to be the best that I can as a rider. I know that uh, within the sport, a 34-year-old doesn't do what I'm doing normally. So. Uh, for me, I want to work hard and achieve those goals and take those boxes. Some guys are like that, you know, like Chad's been out there for a long time and he said it yesterday in our interview, he's like, because I find it, like, it's hard to believe that, you know, you know, Ricky and, 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 and myself were, were done, you know, at, at 26, 27. Looking at Chad, um, he's still here after all those years. It's, it's you know, it's, it is amazing. Hey, go put your feet up. Hold Dude, it. it's about time. You're working. Jeez. I didn't bring it on for a vacation. Why, you want to ride? It's important that, that Supercross is, you know, always close to its roots. You know, I think that, um, you know, for me, the Ozex Open, simple, my only race in Australia. In a city that's our biggest, of course I show up, I try to be the guy that can be competitive and win the race, but for me, the sport is what means the most to me. You know, his attitude, I think, towards racing is, is pretty awesome. You know, I think he, he races with a lot of heart, and, and I think sometimes in this sport, that gets lost. Yeah, he's definitely, you know, one of the guys that I would say has been around the longest and is still there and can win on any weekend.
You know, the, the unique thing about Chad is is he is always a guy that's there, but then he, he'll show up one weekend and he'll he'll pull something out of his ass, like uh, where it come from, you know? And he'll pull off a win or something where it was, you know, the last couple weekends he's been like fourth or fifth, or right, right there still, but then all of a sudden he just comes out and, and blows us all away. The international race, it's an elimination formula, two lap race, sprint. And for those of you who didn't see last night, it came down to what we probably could have predicted. Chad Reed, the greatest of all time, greatest Aussie of all time, against Justin Brayton. America's got a strong team, so does Australia. What a matchup it's going to be. Brayton riding on some unbelievable confidence at the moment. Thumping sound. They're unreal. They absolutely light up the stadium. Reed home first for Australia. Best of the Americans is Justin Brayton. And they will go head to head in the final of our feature race. Here we go. Beautiful start by Brayton. Gets the whole shot over Reed. That's critical. But he's not given up whatsoever. Pressure. Yeah. Applying the pressure. Look at Reed. Gets oh, he's there. Oh, he was so close. He wanted that one. Brayton now knows he's there. Reed squares it up. Is he going to do it again? He does. Over and under. Brayton comes back at him. Brayton says, Where are you going? I'm watching you closely. Underneath again, Justin Brayton. Oh, and Reed didn't, wasn't able to pinch him out of there. Last time through the sand. Watch Reed. He's going to square this up. Can he get the drive? He's got to dive up the inside. Watch this. He goes for it. Oh, so close. He gets there. And Reed. the crowd go ballistic. They're erupting in the stadium. Reed. Doesn't get much better than this. Legendary Ryan Villapoto wowing the Australian crowd. Reed on bike 22. Here we go. Oh, block pass by Reed and he forces Brayton wide. Villapoto leads the way. This is going to be a ripping race and Reed is riding out of his skin. There's no doubt about that. He's riding with, you know, so much commitment. Like he said he, in his interview, I was kind of chomping at the bit. And that's how he's riding right now. He's riding like he's fit, he's focused, he's healthy, and he's rejuvenated. So Villapoto. Oh! Reed up the inside. We said it's about a second quicker. Villapoto probably caught off guard a little bit, and there he goes. Shannon's shortcut works for Chad Reed. Chad Reed looks like he's going to do it. For the second day in a row, out of the sand, into the whoops where he's so strong. They erupt here at the Kudos Bank Arena. He can relax, he can roll off the throttle. Reed does it. Chad Reed's supposed to be the guy who's on his way out. You go look at the racing this weekend, I think it might change some people's thought process. feet for Reed. Man, he has just been on rails this weekend. The focus. I mean, this is just, he's in great shape for, for 2017, it would seem. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Chad Reed. Chad, last night went exceptionally well for you, but you seem to find a whole new level of desire tonight from that shootout where you went one-on-one -on -one with Justin Brayton to your attitude in that final with seeing a new Reedy. You know, I, uh, I came here this weekend much, much more prepared than, uh, than I had years past. Um, the last month I've been on the grind, and uh, I think we found a little more, but I think there's more. And uh, I'm excited to go home and try to find that. Uh, this guy right here, he's a father figure, and man, I trust him with my life, and he works his damn butt off, and I want to do the same because He's the winningest uh, mechanic of all time. He's worked with Ricky, he's worked with Dungey, worked with me. And I think he needs another championship. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, it's, it's been a great weekend. Last night was unbelievable, uh, this night again. And uh, like I said, you know, it's, my time's coming to an end. I don't know when that end is, but uh, man, I just want to keep fighting and enjoying it and having fun. And I love coming and putting a show on for you guys.
making it two out of two and cementing his place at the top of Australian Supercross. He's a world champion, but he's one of our own. Chad Reed. I honestly, I, I've known Chad for quite a long time, and, and this is a Chad Reed that I haven't quite seen. Last year, I saw him put in a great effort at this event, but after tonight, it's like, wow. 2017 could be very, very interesting. We've seen Daniel Ricciardo doing it in Formula One. Mark Webber as well. The Aussie tradition continues, courtesy of Chad Reed. The one thing that, that I always respect Chad for is, regardless of the cards that he's dealt, he always backs himself, you know. And um, I think people see that. People see that regardless of the situation, he will always put his best foot forward. Regardless of what age you are, you're, uh, you're capable of doing whatever you want. Killed it this weekend. We came to do what we wanted to do, right? Dude, I'm so I'm pumped for you. It's a good step. Yep. Brayden's probably not a little happy, huh? I wouldn't be either. You know, I know he he's had talk about retirement and he doesn't want to, but unfortunately it's gonna come someday. So I think uh, you know he's gonna race for a, for a while, but. Once that day comes, I, I, I look forward to hopefully him sticking around with Yamaha and, and me being on Yamaha and him really taking on that, that mentorship and uh, you know being able to spend a lot more time with him and uh, you know just learn. Yeah, I think he's going to leave a massive legacy. I think from the fans, he've, he's already left a, a massive legacy of just he's so fun to root for. Um, I've raced the guy for years and I still root for him sometimes just because there's been times when you feel like he's he's down and out. Next thing you know he starts his own team and starts winning Supercross races. So I don't have any idea when he'll actually be done. We might be talking about him still in five years when he races and getting podiums. Um, and I think that's awesome. My philosophy on life. Um... You know, like from my earliest memories, nothing ever was unachievable or, uh, or, or anything was really like the goal was too high. And though I was told a million times it was, um, I never truly believed that. And self-belief, I think, has probably been the, the biggest thing that I've held on to. Sure, having a good bike helps, but you know it, it has to come from within inside, and and I just think that that's what I have burning deep inside me, um, not my date of birth. I don't think that 34, 35 is old. You know, like I still feel really young. I truly believe that I can still win races and be podium and and challenge for the championship, and and that's what I'm holding on to. And. I don't care what anybody else says and whatever, what my age and my date of birth is. There's so much more to life beyond racing. And uh, I'm just, yeah, just willing to work hard and not unwilling to, uh, to let it go.